Hi and welcome to the Market Alert uh, for Wednesday the 2nd of March 2022. So what a day yesterday. Stocks uh, were actually had some reality uh, behind them and were slammed as bonds, Bitcoin, bullion and uh, black gold soared. We'll come to black gold in a moment. Given the new situation we need to take a moment of reflection as regards the speed and the way of a gradual normalisation of monetary policy. Well it's not going to happen is it? I mean, the way the markets were falling apart yesterday, crude oil going above $110 on the overnight market or up to $110, then uh, to try and normalize is going to be very, very difficult, i.e. to raise rates by a half a basis point uh, a week today. No, no, it's not going to be a week today. It's two weeks today. It's the 16th, isn't it? Uh, so oil rallies uh, to new highs after IE reports another great uh, global reserve release. And uh, just to show you the impact of, of this, uh, three weeks ago, I recorded a video um, about this, um, highlighting what uh, was likely to happen to fuel price. If I can just bring this up a bit so you can see the bottom there. And uh, yesterday, this was reported in the Daily Mail that uh, we're already in uh, Scotland, uh, as you can see there. Uh, 192 pence uh, per litre for uh, V Power and uh, that's just uh, the regular fuel, isn't it? Or is that on, oh, it's diesel? Yeah, 177 and uh, 175 for uh, petrol. <clears throat> so it's incredible. And this is only when uh, crude oil is uh, $110 per barrel. 144 is the target. It'd be way over two pounds per litre on both petrol and diesel, as I uh, mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Well, three weeks ago, actually. Let's have a look, see what news we got today. I think there's quite a bit out, uh, uh, but again, not of any note really. Got an OPEC meeting today, uh, oddly enough. Uh, ADP numbers are out as well, and uh, Powell is testifying today as well. They're the big ones. You've got the crude numbers later uh, forecast to show a surplus of, uh, sorry, previous was 4.5. Surplus of 2.5, uh, but I think you'll find that's a, end up being a minus. Uh, Gold-silver ratio uh, yesterday was allowed to move down. Silver moved up strongly yesterday. It's been hammered at the moment on the overnight. Oh, what a surprise. I no doubt a, a billion ounces of derivatives going to be sold today to get the price back down below the 200 MA. And you can see that already because uh, the gold-silver ratio moving back to the upside. So in the Dow, let's have a look uh, at yesterday. It doesn't look like a lot uh, was happening, uh, but it was. Uh, let's just uh, measure up uh, what happened uh, during uh, yesterday's uh, trading session. Uh, just get the right bar. And uh, you can see yesterday that uh, we had 999 points low to high for the Dow, just under a 1,000 point uh, range for the uh, cash market and uh, including the overnight as well. I started selling off at the 62% retracement earlier in the day. Let's have a look at the 30 minute to see more of this. And you can see here, this is the 62% retracement area from the daily chart. If you come down here and project back, you'll end up with 78, 89% retracement. Mark it down. And then we had the futures open on the DAX, brought the market back. And then at the DP, it couldn't uh, hold above this level. And that was the way it was to be for the rest of the day as the market made its way down to the S2 before finding some sort of demand coming into the market, which if I just compress this chart, you will see the D there for demand. We've got uh, the divergence and uh, we were oversold in the market managing to come back there. But uh, it was uh, sell all the way yesterday in uh, the DAX in the 30 minute, not a single green bar until we got to the afternoon. And what was interesting in the DAX their selling took place after the 4 p.m. cutoff that uh, we normally trade to. So from and then obviously from 4:30 as well. As uh, tensions, uh, according to the media, became uh, more volatile in uh, Ukraine, which of course you know Europe is uh, in the same land space. So it's a bit of a you know it's closer to home. I think is uh, the expression. So here we've got uh, the Dow. Uh, say uh, closing back below the five bar moving average trying to do its best to hold but uh, these are the downside targets should we move lower in the german dax uh, you can see that uh, we had a big day yesterday for this too let's just have a look see what the 
uh, the range was uh, for the decks. Okay, in the uh, decks you can see that we had uh, 717 points uh, yesterday from high to low. So really, really uh, volatile day. Most of this happened uh, later on in uh, the trading session, which we'll look at uh, in a moment. But the market uh, back to the 89% uh, on the overnight, but not looking good. So I'm going to have to switch up to the, uh, the weekly chart here just to see where we've got... Uh, uh, targets for the downside. So we're looking at uh, 13,600 would be the next downside target if they uh, allow it to move lower during today. So in the 30 minute chart, you can see that uh, we moved higher in the futures. Then the market uh, just decided it was uh, going to sell off. We had a bit of a reprieve in the afternoon to begin with at uh, 1.30. This is the 1.30 market up for an hour. Then the Dow came online and uh, it was just sell all the way with the uh, DAX moving uh, sharply lower there. And then trading sideways, oversold, and then has managed to make its way back. But at the moment, it's trading near the close of uh, yesterday. So let me just have a look at the five minute chart. You can see already we're starting to uh, trade through this at uh, the moment. Um, so yeah, it's still looking weak at the moment, unless, of course, they switch this around at uh, 7 a.m. when the futures come on stream and they manage to uh, move the market to the upside. So be prepared for uh, both ways uh, today uh, on this. Uh, again, it's not over as far as uh, Russia and Ukraine are, are concerned or the sanctions, so it can only get uh, worse. Let's have a, a quick look at uh, the... Currencies, uh, the yen yesterday moving sharply lower, uh, trading down to the support to the left here that uh, was created back on the 24th of January and uh, moving back up and then managing to, like I say, retrace to this level. It needs to get back above the 200 MA if it's to move higher. Yesterday in the 30 minute chart, a bit like the Dow, the DP level, uh, the market uh, just. Uh, trading lower and then in the afternoon really accelerating to the downside as crude oil marched uh, to the upside. In the UK, the pound was hit, trading down to the 78% retracement. Again, 30 minute chart um, of uh, the pound to get the right one. And there we go. Uh, it struggled at the previous day's high, which we can see that in the here because you've got this across here, you've got that uh, resistance. And uh, then uh, we had a, a retracement here, back to the 200 MA market lower retracement again, back to the close. And uh, down we went uh, in the afternoon, all the way down to, let me just grab this level here. This will be the, uh, uh, the 133 level before finding a bit of support. And at the moment we're at yesterday's low where we're currently oversold, so looking to try and move to the upside. Failure to do this, if you go back to the daily chart, you'll see that uh, we'll head down to the 132.32 uh, level for the pound. And then finally, uh, the metals. Well, let's start off with crude oil, as uh, this is already here. You can see it currently trading at 110 on the May contract. The May contract is here. It's a K. That's the symbol for the futures contract and uh, heading up obviously to try and break the 144 dollar per barrel level it may not be 144 here but that's the official number we've got 148 each broker prices things slightly different but uh, i think the official figure on the nymex is 144 it doesn't matter but you can see that we're only uh, in this case so uh, we're 38 dollars away now from the all-time high and that relates back to the what I was showing you earlier with regards to the fuel prices, they'll all be over two pounds uh, per litre uh, for sure as uh, we go forward. If the market's allowed to move back to this, and I'm afraid if we go through 148, we go through 150. That's the way it works. And then 150 is to 200 dollars. If this continues in the Ukraine for months, that's where we go, I'm afraid. But uh, dollar for yesterday. Uh, moving higher, which is why you saw the yen, the pound, uh, slam to the downside. Bit of a flight to quality. Not much quality in it. It's a devaluing asset, but there you go. That's how it's perceived. 
Uh, gold on the 30 minute chart uh, breaking out yesterday afternoon as did silver. We got close to, uh, uh, if we have a look at this, uh, one, uh, 1950 is where we traded up to uh, yesterday. This is the 1950 BRN. Uh, market was uh, slammed back. They don't want it going through 1950 because then we go through the all time high uh, for gold, which is just over $2,000. Uh, if I recall, I don't think I can get it on the daily because I might be able to probably off with a better, uh, better looking at a, uh, a longer time frame. I'll show you tomorrow. Save me uh, loading that now, but uh, over $2,000 for uh, gold and that's amazing because in 1980 it was just uh, i tell you what let me do it let's just do it because it was uh, fascinating to uh, to have a look at this before we move on to uh, silver i just need to find uh, the symbol i have got it somewhere i've got a lot of symbols in here just got to find it there it is let's just create a, a monthly chart right so now we can see where we're at and uh, the all-time high for silver, well, not the all-time high. It is the all-time high, sorry, yeah, uh, $2,076. So that's where we are. We need to take out uh, this high that we uh, managed to get to there, 1974. That needs to be taken out. But if we look at uh, the bigger picture, I don't think I can get back to 1980 on this gold chart now I say that I uh, don't think that's going to be possible. Uh, now I'll find another one for tomorrow, but uh, gold, if I recall, was uh, $800 in 1980 when Volcker was part of the Fed and, intra and uh, inflation was at 12% and he started to increase uh, interest rates. And it's now, as you can see here, it's uh, three times higher and yet silver is still 50% cheaper than 1980, 1979, despite yesterday's attempt to move higher there, putting in a high of 25.56. Why is it stopped at this level? Well, because the bankers don't want it to move any higher. And the only way I can show you a retracement on this, because this is the low and the high is to click twice above here. And you'll see we just went through the 89% retracement yesterday, and now they're bringing it back in style. And I don't wouldn't be at all surprised if they uh, manage to bring it back down to uh, the 200 MA in an attempt to uh, get the price down. It's, it's certainly being moved down. But the first thing to watch is the 50% retracement and that uh, five bar moving average, because if it can bounce off there as it has done on these occasions, that that would be good. And you'll see all of the time it's gone through the five bar here. You'll see this pattern all the way down to five minute charts and one minute charts. Uh, if the market holds at the five bar moving average, the momentum remains intact. But uh, I'm sure they'll do whatever they can to uh, bring the market back. So watch the 38, but in particular this uh, 50, because that's where the five bar moving average is as well. I suspect they'll get down to that level and then tomorrow they may be able to try and bring it back. Well, that's where we are at the moment. There's your 89% retracement in the 30 minute chart. Bang on 89 and the market down to the DP. At the moment, they're just buying back in by the looks of things. But it's not looking good because it's starting still to drift down uh, to uh, the downside there below the uh, DP level. Okay, that's it uh, for today. As ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.